Apple's turning their iPhone into a MacBook. The Supreme Court might side with pirates and what is going on with Nvidia's new GPU launch. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Tuesday, July 1st. 2025, that's right, we are in the second half of this year, back half. We're going through it, and uh, we're now a month away from our next PC giveaways that are going to be happening over on the Twitch UFD Tech stream. We have an RTX 5090 Aorus Master PC that we're going to be building, and the new NZXT H9 Flow, and then over on the Twitch.tv forward slash UFD Music, where we have some lo-fi music and some background music that you can kind of just work or study or you know do other things with. Uh, we're giving away an RX 9070 XT PC over on that channel, so we'd love to have you go check out those Twitch channels and. And figure out uh, how to get involved in that in case you're interested. And it appears that Apple thinks a lot of people would be interested in a cheaper MacBook. Despite the fact that the MacBook Air is incredibly well selling at its thousand dollar price point, it's one of the most popular laptops in America and in the world. Turns out that they want to go a little bit lower on the price point. With reports indicating that they're planning on releasing a MacBook, base MacBook, not Air, not Pro, with an A18 Pro chip, which is what's currently in the their flagship phone of the 16 Pros and Pro Maxes. So this was being revealed by a well-known Apple leaker, then it started popping up in Apple's code base, and now it looks like it's actually likely to happen sometime soon. So the expectation is that it's not really gonna change much versus what we have with the MacBook Air right now. 13 inch, it's probably gonna have a, a good display, good speakers, that what you come to know from a MacBook Air, but it's gonna be in more colorful colors such as blue or yellow or pink, the fun ones. So it looks like Apple's looking to now bring back their MacBook, but instead using iPhone processors, which might seem a little strange, but let us remember that the only reason that Apple's M series chips are any good is because of the decades of experience that they had in designing their A series chips for their phones. The M1 to M4s are all based off of that experience and the A series mobile chips that you find in their iPads and iPhones are actually still quite competent. And if you put them with a better thermal solution in something like a laptop chassis, they do have the chance to outperform your expectations, especially when you consider, at least in synthetic benchmarks, the A18 Pro, which is expected to go in this MacBook, is equivalent to the M1 that launched uh, half a decade ago. So we're, we're looking at pretty competent phone chips that, again, should be at a lower price point. This should give you everything that you've come to expect from a Mac, but again, in a cheaper package with not as much as what people would need for intensive applications, but by golly, it should be fine enough for web browsing and just doing basic things across the internet would be my guess. And that's probably who Apple is targeting here is anybody who needs to do things just in Safari or Chrome or Firefox or what have you. They're not actually looking to uh, do a whole lot with their laptops otherwise. Think of it like a Chromebook, but Apple style. And while you think about that, I also want you to think about your skin and today's video sponsor. There's no two ways about it. Your skin is important. It keeps your insides on the inside and the outside on the outside. Your skin is working every day, so why aren't you taking care of it? Thankfully for you and your skin, today's sponsor, Geology, makes it super easy to start caring for your largest organ. It can be overwhelming to figure out what the needs of your skin are and what to use in each case. I get that, but Geology makes getting started super easy. By answering a few simple questions about your skin and results you want, in 60 seconds, you have a custom derm-grade skincare routine ready to be shipped literally to your door. The people have spoken. They love geology, just like you will too. Boasting over 41 awards and 10,000 five-star reviews, geology is helping tons of people keep their skin clear and healthy. By keeping the process simple and crafting a routine that is easy to follow, they've made it easy to stick to your plan and achieve your skincare goals. Geology also doesn't just stop at your face. I don't know if you know this, but you've got skin all over you. They've got this awesome smelling Moab Super Clean Body Wash in the Bergamot and Juniper scent, or even hair care products, cause your scalp is skin too. Take 60 seconds to go check out Geology right now. With my code UFD70, you can score a whopping 70% off your personalized skincare trial and get a free gift of your choosing. Plus, if you see something cool and wanna add it to your routine, you're gonna get 50% off. So check out Geology via the QR code on screen or via the link in the description below. Thanks to Geology for sponsoring. Well, well 
while geology might be trying to protect your skin, you might want to keep some anchor power banks away from that, that little uh, organ you got because it could cause some issues. With Anchor now announcing that they have five more power banks that they have to recall over fire hazards. This is something that we reported on recently that there was a specific model of their power core 10,000 power banks that had to be recalled due to this fire risk. But now there are significantly more that are being announced that are in their model A1257 and 1647 power banks, their Maggo power banks, model A1652, and their Zolo power banks. And this is from, I believe, 2016 to 2022. And in case you're somebody who's purchased one of these and are trying to figure out, are you affected by the recall? We do have it linked in the video description with the sources that you can check out and see whether or not you can need to submit for a recall with these. Anchor does say that this is very unlikely to happen, but out of abundance of caution, they are recalling these and you can get that taken care of. Check it out before uh, anything happens. You, you wouldn't want that to happen, but you know what we do want to happen? This guy giving you the deal. This guy. This guy giving you the deals. Reese. Reese dealing it up. Yo, welcome back to UFT Deals. Bring the hottest tech deals out on the internet. And now, uh, hey, I'll jump straight into the deals for you today. Starting off, something that needs no introduction. The legendary Cooler Master Hyper 212 Spectrum V3 ARGB CPU air cooler going for only $13.50 with a coupon applied, bringing it a further $4 off. For the next up, we have the Sennheiser HD569 closed back wired studio headphones going for only $129.95, making it $50 off. These are the closed back versions of the 560s that I personally like to use. And then lastly today, we have the Samsung 990 Evo Plus Gen 4 NVMe M.2 SSD with the four terabyte variant having the biggest discount going for $234.99, making it $93 off, which you can get a further discount if you're part of their educational programs. But if you pick one up, let me know. And with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, it looks like the Supreme Court of the United States wants to deal with a court case that's been going back and forth between Sony and Cox Communications with regards to piracy and what happens on internet service providers' networks. This is something that Sony actually won versus Cox, where they sued them for letting people pirate on their network. They got a billion dollar fee for it, with it being ruled in Sony's favor that Cox should have done more to stop it. They're responsible for what happens on their network. Cox then appealed it, got the billion dollars stricken down, but not necessarily the ruling that they're responsible for what happens on their network. But now it looks like that case is being taken up by the Supreme Court here to kind of decide once and for all, is this how it's gonna play out at least in the US ISP market? With Cox specifically saying that they don't wanna be held liable for materially contributing to copyright infringement merely because it knew that people were using certain accounts to infringe and did not terminate accents without proof that the service provider affirmatively fostered infringement or otherwise intended to promote it. They're essentially saying they're kind of like a landlord. You don't find the landlord unless they're in on it for things that are illicitly happening at their properties. Unless the landlord has a hand in it, is kind of making it go round, they're separated from that. They have legal distinct protection from that. And that's what Cox is kind of trying to seek from the Supreme Court right now. And this is off the backs of somebody in the current US President Trump's administration who backed Cox up on this, essentially saying that yes, that analogy is pretty apt, that Cox should not be liable for these things and they did not materially benefit from it. Cox doesn't get more money from people who are pirating versus people who are not pirating. So it's kind of a moot point for them to pay a billion dollars because they didn't benefit from it. They didn't make extra money off of it. So them paying out for it is not necessarily good. So this is going to the Supreme Court. They'll rule on this at probably some point later this year, especially since they are currently on recess, but it could have big impacts for how ISPs start to treat piracy activity on their networks moving forward. You know, what could have been a slap in the wrist where they just kind of maybe throttle you for a little bit could start if the Supreme Court rules against Cox, start being something where they have to take more heavy handed action and shut down any appearance of nefarious activities on their networks. But we'll keep you updated as it plays out when the decision comes through, we'll let you know what's happening there. But I can't can't let you know what's happening with the RTX 5050. It's either or who knows what's going on because Nvidia announced with the announcement of this card that it would be launching towards the back half of July. But according to Amazon listings, as well as listings in other countries, as well as information that came out before Nvidia talked about the 5050, indicates that the release date is today. MSI listed their RTX 5050 8 gig Shadow 2 XOC graphics card over on Amazon with them having a July 1st release date with a pre-order now set up going on right there for the $280 price point. Now, 
it's not quite clear why there's a discrepancy right here on the Chinese websites for Nvidia. It never mentioned the second half of July, even though it did on other websites for Nvidia. So it appears that it's not applying to all regions, but it looks like even here in the US that it might actually come out earlier than we're expecting. And it's not necessarily understood why Nvidia is even rushing out this card, especially with no direct competition from AMD with the RX 9060. Maybe they're just trying to stymie anybody who's trying to pick up something like the RX 9060 XT. Somebody looks at that $300 card and then sees there's an Nvidia $250 card and they're like, I wanted Nvidia anyways, and they'll pick that up. You might not think like that hot news viewer, but there are people out there who uh, have more severe brand loyalty than you do. And that could be potentially what they're trying to get at with a quicker launch of the 5050, even if it's not necessarily competing against anything besides the ARC B580, which actually went on sale on Newegg for MSRP yesterday. It was kind of nice to see. And at least at this of the time of recording, it's still in stock at that price, which we recently did a review of the B580 on the channel here, which you can check out right up there. And if you compare it to other used options from NVIDIA and AMD, it's not as good, but we haven't had the opportunity to compare it against the new options. We have not gotten the 5060 uh, review done yet. We have not been able to test the 9600 XT, and we certainly have not gotten a 5050. Hopefully we should be able to compare it to the B580 sometime soon uh, in further content outside of Hot News moving forward. But let's move backwards to see what you guys said in yesterday's episode of Hot News in the comments. We got Paula Shatry saying, I hope your Intel on Intel is ultra reliable to the core. I don't like that. I don't like that. I find it funny, but I don't like it. Please don't do that again. And then 445588997 saying, love how Catlin, I hope I spell her name right, you didn't, is making all kinds of gestures behind, grabbing the attention. Just kind of like this Reese uh, plate right here, this piece of glass with Reese's face on it. It's always grabbing the attention. And then Hattie saying 5070 T sipper. And that's, that's pretty good, T-Sipper. I forgot that uh, I had a nomenclature for the 4070 Ti Super towards the end where uh, I called it the Super Ti and then even shortened that further by calling it the STI, which has various implications, uh, you know, if you think about Subaru's engines. That, that could happen. And then Protrady saying, can we keep Reese's face in the background in future videos? He's just like a friendly chap and I enjoy seeing his face overseeing the video from afar. I'm cool with it as long as it looked like the autofocus did not pick him up. As long as that continues to happen, then uh, Reese can stay there. I'm cool with it. And then JP Turismo saying, you got me re-listening to OG Ska. Forgot how amazing it was. You know, I quickly realized after trying to delve into other bits of Ska after enjoying Streetlight Manifesto to realize I'm not a ska fan it's just not for me i think uh you know streetlight manifesto hits more of the like pop punk mixed with horns and that that like i appreciate that whereas like regular ska feels more like punk music with horns and i don't like punk music and then when you fuse it with horns doesn't make it that much better for me so that's uh kind of my distinction i know there th th this is like me parsing it down to its simplest forms and that there are examples otherwise than that but traditional ska is not my jam, not my, not my thing. I, I just, I like certain bands in the ska scene. And then Pedron saying, laughing like Woody Woodpecker, hoping that wasn't on purpose. And that is just your laugh. No, I, I intentionally do that. And I'm glad that some people pick it up, that it sounds a little bit like that. That's been the intent. And uh, thank you for recognizing it. It's a, it's a skill that I've developed. I'm not gonna develop this episode of Hot News anymore. I'm gonna leave you here. I'll see you back here for hopefully tomorrow. More of the Hot Tech News then.